Hey guys, welcome back to Clownfish TV. This is Neon. I am here with Geeky Sparkles. Hello. And uh, we're actually going to talk about the comic book industry because we've got some drama, some fresh hot drama from the comic book industry. That's about the only more time. More than normal? More than normal. Yeah, this is about the only time we talk about comics anymore because nobody watches our comic book videos. But uh, this is a really interesting situation. There was a comic book retailer who put a video out, I think it was last week, talking about the problems he's having selling mainstream media product mm -hmm. comics, right? And he basically calls out a lot of the writers today, not by name, but says, look, you know, uh, customers want to buy books about Steve Rogers and Peter Parker. They don't want your self inserts. Just give us comics about characters they care about and things will be fine. I basically can't sell this stuff. This fanfic you've been peddling. I think people have been saying, like on YouTube, we've been saying. Oh, absolutely. That's basically what he said. Nothing that, you know, it's pretty much what all the people that have been covering comics have been saying. Yes. Well, this this very, very mild take was enough to upend the, the comic book community. And I'm using the finger quotes here. The loving. <laughs> you use finger quotes. I just use a finger. <laughs> the loving comic book community. And we had uh, comic book professionals coming out dogpiling this guy. Uh, dismissing him because of the way he looks. They're like, he looks, he looks like the Simpsons comic book guy. <laughs> Here's the thing, when you do that, basically you have no arguments. That's what you're, you're, you're lo lowering yourself to. Yeah, exactly. But beyond that, like these are the same people that were upset when certain YouTubers were calling their friends blue hairs or whatever. And he's a comic shop owner. This is the guy who places the orders. Uh -huh. I know, who makes sure it gets into the hands of customers, who, who you kind of need to be on your side. He is he is a gatekeeper, for basically for the customer. He is the go-between the customer and the publisher. And you're gonna take a shit on this guy, right? If I were your publisher, I would, I would find the freelancers that were attacking the retailers and be like, don't you dare, because- What is that, don't shit where you eat? Exactly. This this is one of the guys who's basically paying your your bills, right? And you, you we're running out of retailers. Uh, comic shops are folding. It doesn't matter w you know what criticism you give of the industry. If you give any criticism, um, a couple of weeks ago, Coliseum of Comics, which is a franchise in Florida, said, "Hey, things are bad. The direct market's going to implode within two years," and we had people. Freaking out. And then we had like Heidi McDonald trying to throw shade at this store, which seems to be doing pretty well, given that they're in a strip mall, mm -hmm. you know, and it's a pretty big location. They have multiple locations. And she's trying to say, it's like, well, I heard that they don't, they don't pull the comics for their customers like they're supposed to. They don't really handle pull lists very well. And the guy who was Wait, in that, charge. That's her argument. That was her argument. They so, don't handle pull lists very well. Well, I don't think you pull very well either, Heidi, but that's a whole nother story. Ooh. <laughs> anyway. I mean, that's what I hear. Anyway, yeah, well, that's what she said that's why I heard. And uh, the guy who actually is in charge of the pool list uh, really took umbrage to this and went after Heidi McDonald. Well, she's stepping in again with this this retailer too, by the way. Doesn't she look tired? <laughs> you know, so we're gonna we're gonna talk about this because this is a really interesting situation. And uh, pretty much again, everything that YouTubers have been saying, that fans have been saying, now that retailers are saying it, and they have nothing to lose at this point. So many shops have gone out of business this year. But wait, but you, Heidi McDonald. Wasn't she the one that sold her her site to a like was like a bigger like organization? Yes. And it did so shit that they let her buy it back or they got it back to her because they weren't making any money at it. I think it was I want to say it was Oni Press and Lion Forge. I think it was Lion Forge. I think. And it didn't it did so shitty. Yes. That they got they gave it they gave it or sold it back to her because it wasn't worth the money or the time. It, yeah. Well. But you know. <laughs> and she's constantly out there asking for money. Yes. Yes. I think what look, at the end of the day, it's very easy to see what's really going on with the comic book journalists is that they're uh, crazy jealous of comic book YouTubers and people that have platforms that take a contrary um, stance on things. They, they want things to be fine because they have a lot of friends working for these publishers. But it's like, look, if the shops go out of business, the publishers go out of business. This is not rocket science. There's no place to sell your shit anymore and you will have nothing to cover. So it's in your best interest to try to, to uh, uh, see the comic book industry get as healthy as possible. But I think it's too late. I think, uh, you know, ICV2 ran that guy's article from uh, Col Coliseum of Comics. Mm -hmm. And he's like, yeah, I've been doing this for a long time. And um, we got about two years left in the direct market. And, and this is the same with the, the shop that I used to actually go to, Flying Colors Comics in Concord. 
Uh, he's closing his doors, I guess. Uh, he started Free Comic Book Day. We had a couple of major. Oh, I didn't know that you went to that place. Yeah. Yeah, it was, yeah, I learned something new about yeah, you every day. Yeah, well, I wasn't too far from where I lived out there, but um, you know, so there, there, he's apparently packing it in. We got, um, you know, a couple of New York shops that are going out Jim Hanley's universe, and uh, they keep trying to say things are fine. Jim Hanley's universe, they went out, and McDonald is there trying to be like, well, it wasn't the SJWs that put you out of business as they're like packing their stuff up. I'm like, what the hell is wrong with you people? You're so. Hot to be right. That but how you're... can you be a journalist? How can you claim to be a journalist when you don't actually even like look at what's going on? You just didn't she write an article where yeah, maybe it was true that stuff wasn't doing well because we did a video on it. We did, and then she had to walk that back too. It's like yeah, Our there friends is got pissed and threatened to cancel her. There is no war in Bossing Say. You know? Yeah, whatever. <laughs> there is yeah. no war. Uh, comics are fine, guys. Everything's fine. No, comics are not fine. Retailers are telling you it's not fine. Publishers not being able to pay people, canceling books or going out of business. It's not fine. And eventually, uh, Disney and or Warner, which are both pinching pennies, they're going to get tired of publishing comics. Mm -hmm. And they can just outsource all that to some other company. And I think it's going to happen sooner rather than later. But let's talk about this before we get into it any further we're already into it pretty far uh please subscribe for more pop culture news views and rants guys you get woohoo if you do Woohoo! the woohoos are back i'm back they're yes, back i'm back yes uh i was Geeky away sorry i was i had to help my mom one day and squid king another day so yeah she was doing holiday related things because yes, but i'm back now we actually have lives outside of youtube uh sometimes Sometimes. Sometimes. So we're going to we're going to start with this video. Um, his name is uh, Glenn O'Leary, and I believe he has his own YouTube channel. And he's been talking about comics and the business of selling comics for a while. Okay. So he's he's not stupid. This is but not clearly not right. This isn't like some rando. This is like, you know, this is a guy who this is his his living. And now the randos are usually people like that. Heidi McDonald likes. So let's um let's uh take a look at what he has to say here. I don't think Geeky's heard this rant, um, but uh, he's a hundred percent correct. Ready? Mm -hmm. Okay, here we go. Glenn O'Leary on the modern comic book industry. Most of these new writers don't have the love of comics like these older writers had, um, and all they care about is how can I put myself in the book. That that's true. We talked about true. we talked about this all the time. We, and it's it's not just comics. It's uh, animation. I was gonna say it's cartoons. It's uh, <laughs> video games, movies, television. No, we don't care what you would do if you were Iron Man. We don't care who you are. You're writing Tony Stark. You're not writing yourself in a mm -hmm. book. If that's the case, write your own comic with you in it. No one will read it because nobody cares. People people grew <laughs> up. That is true. It's a lot. Look, they're they're taking established IP. And again, it's not limited to comics, but it's this whole generation of creators, showrunners, whatever. They're they're taking these established IP and they're turning them into their own fan. Well, fiction. I think too, writing a character as the character is is hard. It takes skill. It takes research. research. It's so much easier just yeah. to make them your you know an OC of yourself. Oh yeah. Well, the worst was that one that one Batman YA novel where the author flat out said she's like well i couldn't relate to bruce wayne so i like made him asian, asian and yes. rich and changed everything about him and there we go uh, uh growing up loving peter parker loving miles morales loving all these captain america we don't need you to put your input in it just nope. write steve rogers yeah don't write steve rogers what would steve rogers be if i was steve rogers that's not how it works but that's again how most of the most of these new people write nowadays. That's why most of the stuff is shit. Because no one's buying it. Nobody's and that's buying the problem. it. Problem. That's why just stores are shutting down. Yeah, uh, the shops that are staying in business or the shops that are pivoting to tabletop. They're pivoting to back issues. Uh, I know a few stores that even before the pandemic, they were like, "We can't sell new comics, so we're going to sell uh, trades of stuff we know we can sell, and we're going to sell back issues, and that's it. We're not doing monthly floppies." anymore because the stuff is not selling we don't care how you would what you would do because we don't care about your life whatsoever <laughs> just write a book get paid for what you do yeah. get paid for what you're supposed to be doing and make it a, a good story yeah they're the caretakers of the character they're not like the character no no and they don't they don't seem to understand that like everybody is so narcissistic they're so self-absorbed that uh well you have to only can write write like pick characters like you so they have to make them like them mm-hmm yeah, it's just so stupid. Yeah, so this did not this did not go well. Let's uh, let's well, go. They don't like honesty. 
Yeah, so we got comic book pros dogpiling this guy. Um, oh, Gil Simone. Of course, Gil Simone oh. is there. Gil Simone literally has no life except sitting on Twitter all day. Yeah, so here's the thing that we're seeing this week. It's very interesting. We have some of the, uh, I guess they call them the usual suspects, the people that were in the Whisper Network, uh, dogpiling this guy, making fun of his appearance, which is so stupid. They're like, he looks like the comic book guy from The Simpsons. Well, Gail Simone is saying, though, that she's watched other videos and they're good. Yeah. But she's like, you know, it's a clip from a much larger video. Basically, she's kind of actually telling people not to dogpile him, I think. Yeah, but now you want to play the hero. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So I won't, I mean, I'm not going to be too mean to her now, even though I still think she spends time, time on Twitter. She has you blocked for what? Uh, yeah, I don't even no, know no, what the why. hell she has you blocked for. I know for. why. Because we were talking about gingers the one time, and I said about, you know, that characters being, you know, they're ginger, they keep getting changed. And there was something she started trying to get into with me about, and then she got ratioed so damn hard. It was ridiculous. And then she, she blocked me. Yeah. But she I'm, got ratioed really hard. I'm sorry. She's part of the whisper network. She's been, and, uh, you know, she's got some good points. She used to uh, look, her stuff was actually pretty good back in the day. It was, I don't but, know, cause I didn't read it. but she's, she's just like the, all these people went off the deep end and now they're on the wrong side of it. Now they're seeing, what happens when they get control of the industry? Wasn't for she years. one of the ones that was trying to walk it back to center not that long ago? Yes. And then people are like, nope, can't put the G back in the bottle nope. now. Who is this a lovely individual? Jamal Igo. Oh, Jamal I- Okay, yeah, I remember Jamal. You know, if I were, look, if I were a retailer, if I were a retailer, I'd be like, you're going to make fun of retailers who literally put the food on your table. I'd make a list and not buy their books. I would too. You, a lot of these people encourage blacklists of anybody that they thought was conservative or anybody they that did. was critical of It'd the comic book industry. It'd be a real shame if, you know, you had, you, comic store, stores wouldn't carry your books if you published the wrong person. Yeah, you can, mm-hmm. ex- you can explain it to your editor. Oh, hey, how come... Uh, Glenn here isn't carrying the new issue of uh, you know Batman or Supergirl or whatever. Oh, because you shit on him on Twitter and now his shop won't order that book and anymore. Why is he? Why is oh. he quote unquote lovely individual? Like you know he's clearly being sarcastic. But why is he? Why? Why? Because he said the truth. He said the truth, and he was nothing. He said was outrageous, outlandish, nothing. Uh, and, he and just if, said. And if I Jamal can't... wanted his books picked up and everything else, he'd be in his store kissing his ass normally. Back in the day, comic book creators used to go to shops and kiss ass. They used to do book signings, and now there's so much disdain. I remember the logic with these people uh, just a couple of years ago, because we've been doing this pretty much since the beginning of all this shit, because we used to work in, in mainstream comics. But like, I remember the beginning, it was like, oh, I don't have to make the fans happy. I can call them chuds because the fans aren't the ones buying the comics it's the retailers as long as the retailers yes. are happy yes oh my how things have changed now we're going to move that goalpost. now we can shit on the retailers too well you're running out of retailers because the shops are going out of business at a shocking rate you know an alarming rate like nobody seems to like do you know what's going on like this is what happened. you got what you wanted you got to be in charge of the comic book industry for the last half a decade eight years where you know six eight years you got to be in charge and it's all burning down. It's all burning down. Well, You're not going to have anything soon. Well, this other comment, like comic shops where owners' opinions can be as antiquated as their business model. Listen, dumbass. First of all, it's not untrue. It is, it is in the numbers. The proof is in the numbers. These stores are closing at an alarming rate. They, the, these are people who have been doing this for years. And this is what he's saying is happening from a, from a first person perspective. Yeah. It's not antiquated views. It is actual data. Comic Book Herald, who has jack shit followers on Twitter and apparently has, supposedly has a YouTube channel. Comic Book Herald, that is like Harbinger of Doom. Like, this is a guy that's supposed to be, or gal, I don't know, or they, them, I have no idea. This is somebody that's supposed to be, like, promoting comic books, and you're like, you're, it's antiquated, those, those paper pamphlets. And it's like, that is the backbone of the direct market, you know? And yeah, manga's completely eaten its lunch, graphic novel sales are doing fine in certain graphic novels in certain locations, right? But we're talking about the direct market and and it's it's going to fold, which means so many people that only work in the direct market are going to be out of work, including 95% of the people that are on Twitter causing problems. Mm-hmm. But yeah. this doesn't make it antiquated. This is actually, you know, provable by numbers. Yeah. Um, so Jimmy Palmiotti actually has a pretty good good take. Uh, he said, you have to read the history of the character yes, you're you have writing. to understand it. That used to be a requirement. Okay, so this is a true story. I actually, when I was about 19, 20, I was about 19 or 20 years old. I went to DC Comics. 
offices looking for work in New York back in the day. And I met with uh, Mike Carlin, who uh, I actually liked him. Some people don't like him very much. I actually thought he was all right. And uh, I was looking for work. And uh, he's like, well, you're not quite there yet. He said, you know, maybe another year or so. Well, you know, whatever. And we, we talked for a while. I was there for about two hours. But he was like grilling me on how much I knew about these characters. He's basically like, I'm not going to let anybody go on one of these books unless they actually know something about the characters. And something I forget, I said something to him. It really irritated him. Oh, no, Superman. I, I, I had Superman samples. And I drew the uh, samples. I had treads on Superman's boots. And he called me out on that. He's like, if you knew you're Superman, you would know he doesn't have treads on his boots. He wears sock boots. And that is, that is fact. And then he started going off on a whole bunch of like, like totally nerding out on all the Superman and Flash trivia and Batman trivia. And he was kind of like, this is what you got to do. Not only do you have to be really damn good at drawing, but you got to know the characters. You have to know your stuff. Inside and out. He mm-hmm. said, there are people here. I don't think that's the case now, but he said, there are people here that literally that is their job is to check for continuity errors and and to know, you know, 50, 60 years of history with these characters. And I don't think they give a shit. Well, now. then apparently got too, too much for him because he deleted the post because of the bad energy it was bringing. What, your peers? Amazing how some people can't have a civil conversation anymore. I enjoy hearing both ends of an argument, but it has to stay polite. Your peers are the ones doing this, Jimmy. Come on. Come on, you can't be that blind. You cannot be that blind. So uh, it got so bad that uh, Mark Miller stepped in, and apparently he did. I haven't watched it yet, but he did an interview with the guy. Yeah, so I guess you can see that on his channel. Yeah, on his channel. And, uh, you know, Mark Miller is a pretty sizable name in comics, and it irritates these people to no end that somebody like Mark Miller would uh, dare, you know, uh, take the opposite position. But, um, you know, he's in a much better place financially, and he doesn't have to worry about getting canceled. Uh, like these people, Rob Liefeld called Heidi McDonald out. Good. This is funny. And he's not, I, I don't think he's wrong, but both Heidi McDonald and Rich Johnston jump into the comments here. Uh, Heidi said the tell in that retailer vid, when he mentions that people grew up reading Miles Morales, Miles debuted in 2011. People could grow up reading Miles Morales. He's been, that's, that's 12, 13, almost 13 years ago. Yeah. So I, if you were like 10, if you're like 10 years old and you started reading... You can. You that's, can. That's how math works, Heidi. Even if you were 12, 13, 14 years old, you, you grew up... Miles has been around for a while. Yes. Miles debuted in 2011 and was criticized right away for not being Peter Parker. I don't need to show you all the racist takes on Miles. You were there, but now he's a beloved classic. Rob says, honest to God, I don't remember any racist reaction uh, to Miles. No doubt his popularity has grown over time. Also worth a note, Spider-Man is Marvel's top brand. So they put him on... The top, you know, basically. Well, here's the thing, too. Like, back then, 2011, we weren't getting the ridiculous, like, Tumblr, Twitter shit we are now. I mean, it was starting. It was starting back then. But it wasn't to the level, like, it hit 2014+. plus. It was, like, back when people were still pretty rational. And you probably didn't see a lot of racist takes. I mean, I don't remember... Um, and if people didn't like him because he wasn't he wasn't Peter Parker, I believe that because a lot of times when you bring a new character in, um, people aren't going to like the character if they're replacing their favorite character, whether they're white, black, whatever color, whatever gender, they're not going to like it. As, you know? Well, I think there are a couple things. Now, this is just this is my memory of it. OK, my memory of it was I don't remember it being a huge deal. Um, I think what happened was one, you have to realize Miles was introduced in Ultimate Spider-Man. Ultimate that Spider- I did know. Ultimate Spider-Man was not the main Spider-Man continuity. It was an alternate universe take on Spider-Man. It was a very good run. Mark Bagley was on it for a long time, right? And uh, they killed Peter Parker off in that universe. Actual Peter Parker, the 616 Peter Parker, was fine. He was still Spider-Man. It made sense, actually, uh, looking at it to differentiate had there being two different Spider-Men from two, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. That made sense. Like they had Spider-Man 2099 and all that wasn't, wasn't a huge deal. As I recall, people were like, Oh, it's not actually the Peter Parker. We know this isn't whatever it's an ultimate and that's, that's fine. But since then, all these publishers have decided that every main character in, you know, in the main continuity has to be replaced. And I think there's been a lot of, and even now they're trying to use miles to replace Peter and other media. Um, but I'm yeah, you, I'm sorry. I'm looking at the you blocked it out, Rob. Uh, it was there. 
The context was different. That's where I was getting to. Yep. Po- people hadn't figured out the comic book culture wars were exhausting, and and you know, people basically it was too. It was before 2014 when all this shit got really annoying. <laughs> now they're they're getting into a pissing match. Her and Rich Johnson. Yes. Rich uh, Johnson, who I want to point out was known as the Qu- Inquirer of the comic books, and that was not in the comic book, like National Inquirer, and everybody thought he was a it thought he was a joke when you know we were doing comics. At the time, it was insane. I broke the story that was happening. I broke the story. Mm-hmm. Not, not you, Heidi. They don't like each other. My understanding is they don't like each other very much. And the racist reaction was over the top. Then it went official and it went insane. Some people who I never thought would have been capable of it went there. Right, Larry? Who's Larry? Larry? I don't know. Larry? I don't know. Um, so you remember correctly. There was no racism toward Miles. People just got called racist for wanting him to have his own identity. Yeah, that's probably what happened. And I I love Heidi's comment, though. That was before the culture wars and comics. Before, you know, you know, everybody gave gave a shit. You mean back when people, you know, just liked who they liked and didn't like who they didn't like. And you weren't a terrible person either way. You mean like that? You mean like that, Heidi? Yeah, she cannot stand. Now, actually, Heidi, I think she used to do, like, they had her and and Rob Liefeld, I think. And she's considered Rob, I think, a friend of the blog, too. Like, they used to do things together back in the 90s. And Rob's just like, I don't. I don't think he was being mean to her. He's just like, I don't remember it. I don't remember it. And then that apparently set her off. So, whatever. That set her off. Didn't happen. Funnily enough, it's still happening today. No, 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 she didn't say still. Funnily enough, it's happening today. Wait, but I thought it was happening since then. Shouldn't it still be happening today? People didn't have, even for a year, like, I don't think people had a problem with it. I, I actually like Miles. I, I think he's 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 a good character. I do. Um, I said this before, and I think that they've actually elaborated on his, his personality a bit more in the movies. You know, I think they've given him more of a voice than he had in the comics. Um, but that being said, the argument is that Miles Morales is a Spider-Man derivative. He's not his own character. He's he's just another it's branded that way. That's the actual way they're branding it. That's t- not, you know. Take it up with Disney. Like if you buy Spider-Man toys, Peter Parker is Spider-Man, literally. Like you buy a Peter it never says Peter Parker Spider-Man unless he's actually without the mask. It's just that's a Spider-Man action figure. But you get a, a Miles Morales Spider-Man. It doesn't say Miles Morales Spider-Man, it just says Miles Morales. Trademark. Mm-hmm. You know, so yeah, you know, take it up with, take it up with Disney. Cause I guarantee you that's a Disney thing. Um, Rob's even like, you know, they said Peter Parker is Spider-Man. Miles Morales is Miles Morales. He says without Spider-Man persona, he does not exist. Same with all Spider-Man derivatives. Um, he basically says that Miles is a oh, derivative. How racist of him. How racist. But the thing is, is that, yeah, Miles is derivative of Peter Parker. He, he did in the ultimate universe, take over for Peter Parker. He is in the game being primed to take over for Peter Parker. And that's where people are having a problem. Well, common like, sense is just racism. So common sense is racism. Um, so then Rob goes out and retweets Mark Miller and says, Hey, well done. Glenn has had a store for 30 years. I wish him another 30 years of success after Heidi takes a shit on him. Like we're, we're living in a, a time in the comic book industry where comic book journalists, people that have been covering the comic book industry for years are rooting for retailers to fail. Where I know, comic I know, book professionals about, yes. are rooting for retailers to fail. I don't understand how this works, right? This isn't how this works. And then, the, like you said, not long ago, they were like, it's not, it's a fans. You have to keep the comic, you need comic people in, in business. You need to keep these, these professionals in business. You need to keep their stores open. Yeah. And now you're like, someone says something that's completely like, factually true, honest. Yeah. And it's something that they're observing as somebody actually in the industry. That's their company, their job. They've been doing 30 years. They've seen the ups and downs and the changes. And they're like saying this, like, look, this is the problem. And now they're like losing their shit. But it's nothing that people like us or other YouTubers have been, haven't been saying forever. It was, it was easy to dismiss YouTubers. And then it got less easy when you start having professionals come into it, like, you know, Ethan Van Skyver. But then it was easy to dismiss him because they're like, well, he just voted for Trump. And he's kind of mean. So then they could dismiss him. But now you've got like Mark Miller and this guy and other retailers all coming out and saying, no, comics are completely fucked. And then the media sitting there like, no, it's fine. Everything's good. You're just a bunch of bigot haters. Heidi needs to just go back to her whispery network places and just stay there. <laughs> it's it's over, like you're you're going to go. to. I think this is the end of this bullshit because a lot of these people that have been causing problems in the comic book industry for the last four or five years, a lot of them can't get work now. I think everybody has caught on that it was all a bunch of bullshit. And it was just a, a small group of people trying to control 
the comic book industry and keep it small. And congratulations, you have successfully shrunk the comic book industry uh, to the place where it's no longer sustainable. And what he's saying isn't even, isn't even like, you know, it's not even ridiculous in any way. Like, no. you need to hire writers who understand the characters and write the characters and don't write themselves because no one wants to read a book about themselves. Yeah. That's common sense. That's like when you go to, like, McDonald's, you're expecting to get a burger from McDonald's, not a burger how they do it at home because that's what they like. You're ordering, you're ordering this, you know, and then you get something else because that's what they, they, well, at home I eat this. We don't care what you eat at home. We want the consistency we expect at this restaurant. And and look, this guy, you know, speaking of restaurants, this guy is a retailer. He has every right to complain about the product he's getting. Right. If, if you owned a restaurant and you had a supplier and that supplier sent you rotten produce mm-hmm. every week that you could not sell, that you either had to throw it out or heavily discount it or something, you would eventually switch suppliers or just stop selling salads altogether. And that's mm-hmm. what a lot of these retailers are doing. They're getting rotten produce every week that they can't sell. Because they're growing it in their own shit. <laughs> and and they're like, yeah, I'm not, I'm not buying this stuff anymore. Because these guys have to pay out of pocket. They don't get to send these books back. You got to drop a bunch of coin on a bunch of titles that you hope people are going to buy. I mean, you've got mm-hmm. pool lists, et cetera, but you're also going to buy stuff that you hope people are just going to come in and pick up. And they're basically like, yeah, people aren't buying the shit anymore. So we're going to go back to back issues. We're going to go to manga. We're going to go to the tabletop games. We're going to sell stuff, you know, trading cards, stuff that people will actually buy, that people actually want. And uh, hopefully from, from uh, uh, publishers and creatives that aren't, you know, taking a dump on them on social media. Well, yeah, it doesn't help that if you, you want him to carry your books or him, other, other people that may be friends with this person, the other retailers are seeing how you're acting. Maybe they're noticing the same trends and they're seeing how you guys are behaving. Yeah. You think they're going to carry your books? They're not. I, I wouldn't. I'd be like, oh. I mean, Grant, you lose a lot of books then because a lot of these dipshits work for them. Well, people. that's the problem. You know, um, so but, then I guess nothing of value was lost. It's like uh, you can't sell them anyway. You look at it and it's it's always the same, like 12 to 15 people. The same names come up again and again. It's like and Disney. Again. Why do you keep making the same mistake over and over again? Like, you, do you like losing money? I don't understand it. I'd fire them and just be like, you, you cost us money because retailers aren't buying our stuff now. Fans aren't buying our books now because of you, because you shot your mouth off on social media. But again, it just shows that the, the people that own these comic book publishers don't give a shit. Because if they did, I'd be cracking down. Guy, could you imagine if Jim Shooter was still there? I don't know. If it, Jim Shooter was a hard ass. And he'd be like, get the hell out of my office. Get the hell out of my building. You're not getting any work. You're done. You're done. And I think the industry's done, too. Are we going to wrap this up? Yes. Please subscribe for more pop culture news, views, and rants, guys. We'll talk later. Bye.